Good morning, everybody. Yep, Shutterbug's awake. One thing of many that I have discovered being out here on the road in the middle of nowhere all by myself is I've learned how to sleep again. Just before COVID started even, I started, I just needed four hours a night. That was it. I just stay up as late as I could crash hard, get up early, and get my butt in gear. That was my life. And now, gosh, I'm getting eight hours of sleep at night. It's like I'm wasting a whole bunch of day, but that's okay, because apparently I need my sleep. And after my sleep, I need my coffee. Oh yeah, how is it? Not too hot, yay. Just that magic balance of catching the water right as it starts to boil. You hear noise on the bottom of the pot. It's like, oh, you're perfect. Off. Don't want to scald my coffee. Yeah. I mean, there's, I got friends. They have those fancy press things, magic things, air things. And it's step after step after step after step to get the perfect cup of coffee it takes forever and you have to do it uncaffeinated i can't do that oh my gosh heck no give me some water a couple of containers one a coffee one a creamer throw some in a cup throw some water on top of that stir drink simple doesn't take a lot of hands no filters it's just oh it's so nice and basic Five minutes I'm drinking coffee. I love it. Oh, yeah. So altitude makes things really, really different. Oh, my gosh. Uh, cooking. If it's a heat and eat kind of thing, you know, open up a can of soup, throw it in a pan, warm that sucker up, and suck it down. That's okay. But if it's a packaged meal, a, a side dish of some kind, which... You know, that's pretty much what I go for. You can add up maybe a little milk, maybe a little butter. They're optional because with my fridge, optional is a good thing. Simple is what I go for. Not nutritious, just filling and simple. My sauces do not thicken upon standing. Oh my gosh. It's like, why is this? Why is everything I make runny as can be? So I looked up cooking at altitudes. And wow, something as simple as 3,000 feet is considered altitude and will screw up your cooking. I'm up here, you know, five, 6,000 feet, 8,000 feet over yonder, and I'm, I'm always 3,000 feet and over. So I got to learn how to deal with this. Apparently, water boils at a lower temperature up in the thinner air. Well, just because it's boiling doesn't mean it's the same as boiling on the coast. <laughs> so you got to add up to 25% cooking time to get the cooler hot water to do what hotter hot water will do. But sauces still do not thicken upon standing forever. It's like a five minute thing should take a half hour just to get it the way you want it. I don't have that kind of patience. So I'm kind of going to give up on those while I'm up here at altitude because it yeah, just, no, 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 no. If you're supposed to have a sauce and you have a runny, it's, it, it's not the same. What else is different? I mean, things cook really, really fast. I don't know if it's the propane that I'm using or butane because I have a little bitty one burner stove and it takes butane. But, oh my God, I'm, you know, start to finish cooking is just mere moments. I get my stuff going, it's almost done, then I'll butter my bread, because I only have a few seconds to do that before it's burnt. <laughs> it's like, wow, everything is just boom, boom, boom in the cooking department. So, that's, that's one thing I like. I don't like spending time in the kitchen. Although the kitchen's rather purdy, but it's kind of windy out here. That's a challenge. Sometimes I have to cook in between my van doors to keep the wind blocked. Like this morning, just to make my coffee. I was in the sun, roasting my ass off for three minutes <laughs> while I heated my coffee, threw it together, and got back over on this side of the van in the shade. Uh, 
Ah, more fun things about van life. Cows. You learn a lot more about cows than you do in the big city, sitting in a house or an apartment or a condo or something. It's just, it's the solitude. There's virtually nobody else out here. I get the odd car driving by on the road. whoop de doo You know, I, there's nobody here bugging me, making demands on me, saying, okay, I need this and this and this and this. And, and you'll do this and this and this and this because, you know, this and this and this and this. No. <laughs> this is my life. My terms, my rules, my day, my thoughts, my ideas, my projects, my life. That's cool. Yeah, it gets boring. I ain't going to shit you about that one. I mean, during the day when the sun is high and there is no shade on either side of the van and really not so much underneath the pine trees because they're kind of scruffy, what do you do? You sit in the van because there's guaranteed shade in the van, but it's boring. Oh my God, There's it's hot because you can't do a lot of projects when it's hot and not at altitude because altitude also affects you not just cooking but you you get winded real fast you get tired real fast because there's no air up here everything is different and you have to adjust to that and I've, I've been learning how to do that I'm going real slow now I mean I was a Southern California zip 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 do this do this do this do this now I'm retired. I'm slow. I don't get in the fast lane unless I have to go around an RV, you know? Otherwise, it's just speed limit, mosey, no rush to get anywhere or do anything. Yeah, unless you gotta pee. It's like, okay, let's get, you know. <laughs> but other than that, you are still in charge. It might be your body parts, but they're still in charge. Why rush? Because there's a hell of a view. I mean, the state, people think Arizona, desert, haboobs, monsoons. What the heck is there? Oh my gosh, mountains, plateaus, forests. The drives around here are just stunning. It's, it's hard to drive because you want to be looking all over the place. Oh, and speaking of looking all over the place, there's a whole lot of place that's not right here. Last night I decided, okay, I'm gonna shoot some stars. It was a nice clear night and the moon is just barely there. And so I got my camera out, it's about 11 o'clock. And I set up the tripod out yonder and I'm looking at the sky going, okay, my app says the Milky Way should be there. Looks a little, little light fluffy clouds. And, those damn clouds were the Milky Way. I could see the Milky Way that I was shooting. Usually I use my app, I aim at where it's at, and then I have to bring it out in post-processing. No! I was seeing the freaking Milky Way. That's what no light pollution does. You know how many stars are up in the sky? I'd wager bazillions buttloads of bazillions and you can see them all out here when there's no light pollution it is so awesome it's like wow why are those clouds not moving why are they pretty much in the shape of what's on my app whoa the galaxy i was seeing our galaxy from here out there i was capturing it i have it on camera yay as soon as I get to my friend Cece's house, I'm going to hang out and plug into her wall instead of my battery unit here because my laptop takes a ton of power. It's got lots of memory. It's a gaming laptop, so I've got the power I need to handle the photos that I capture. And I can't really do that in my van so much, otherwise my fridge is going to be going, Hey, what about me? Yeah, that's not fair. So, yeah, that is like the absolute, total, hugest perk of everything out here 
is seeing the night sky, capturing the incredible fraction of a smidge of what's out there that we know about. How can you not believe in God when you see something like that? Because there is just so much more to life than life here. And it, it's, it's not random, it's not crap, it's, it's, there's a reason for everything. And we are here to be part of that reason for everything. When you look at all that is out there, <coughs> the incredible expanses and vastness and mind-boggling wow of what's out there, and yet we are still here for a reason. We are a piece of all that, an important piece. So we got to remember that, folks. Treat your existence with respect because you are here for a reason. You might not even fathom what it is. God sure as hell doesn't give out memos. I'm telling you, I'd love it if I find little sticky notes all over my van going, okay, here's what's coming up. Here's what's expected. Here's what I'm doing. No, you don't get to really squat in that regard. But, you know, still, it is what it is. And you got to appreciate what you have in front of you. Don't go looking for that other thing and the more expensive thing. Do not try to impress other people because you know what? They're not impressed. And if they're impressed, they're jealous. And they're going to try to one-up you. And it's not a one-upping contest. Life here is all about making this one here the best one that you can be. That's all it's about. Be decent to other people. You don't know what they're going through. Give them respect and honor and love. Even if it's, you know, some dirty, filthy, scruffy, homeless person. That person used to be a you. They had a job. They had a life. They probably had a family and kids and everything you're going through. And somehow life crapped all over them. The same thing could happen to you any second. Trust me, life craps on you like a giant dodo bird flying all over the place. It's how you deal with it and how you deal with others who are going through it that define you, that make this life a life and not just an existence where you're trying to put somebody down so you can feel better about yourself and try to impress somebody else so, you know, they might think you're something, something. Screw that. No, you have to impress one person, our creator. Make your daddy happy. Papa just wants us to be here, be happy, be decent to each other, help each other, make this life here the best we possibly can. And that's what nomading is all about, finding your best life, work in that life, smearing best life all over other people in space. Inspire them. Let them see that they don't have to be just a nine to five, pay this bill, pay that bill, make sure you got this thing covered, do that and do this and do this. Do, do, do. No, it's not a life about have tos and do thises and yada yadas. It's about you finding what makes your soul sing with happiness. Not, you know, you know, some bluesy, jazzy stuff. No, you want joy and happiness. That is why we're here. And that is why I am a nomad. And that is why I'm sharing this stuff with you. So y'all get an idea of what we're all about out here. We're not homeless. We're not, you know, finding a cool alternative to living under a bridge. No, this is living life. Getting out there on our terms, seeing what we got, because we have to impress ourselves. You know, it's like, oh, dude, I, I did that. Oh my gosh, what else can I do? It's self-empowerment. It is all about being your best. So I encourage you to get out there and be your best. I'm going to drink the rest of my coffee so I can be some pester because without coffee, I'm just 
here. So you all have a fabulous day and I will catch up with you in a little while. I'm going to be traveling soon because apparently monsoon season is a thing around here and I don't know that I want to be hanging out for it. So I'm making plans, getting stuff in the works, going to be tidying up and hitting the road in a couple of days. But, you know, I got other stuff to do before I escape the monsoons. But you'll see all about it because, you know, that's what I do. I share. Y'all be good. Don't behave. Just be good. Man, the birds around here are big. Okay, I am going to have the rest of my coffee and catch you later. Shutterbug, out.